Hey everybody, welcome back to Classroom Chat, where every Friday I just chat about my classroom. Stuff that's working, stuff that's not working, the good, the bad, the ugly. Talk all about my classroom in today's vlog. Roll intro. So first of all, I went on a field trip today. That's why I'm dressed in this attire and it was awesome. Yeah, we went to Safety City today where we learned about fire safety, we learned about uh, gun safety, um, bike safety. They got to ride their bikes all over the place in a little town. It was a blast. Love field trips. Wish we could go on more, but it was just a good solid day, good solid week overall. It's a nice solid week. I've, I was able to do some spontaneous stuff this week. I had a teaching tip video on Wednesday about just kind of going off script from time to time. We did some Google Map stuff. Um, just kind of seeing where your students take you. And this is like, obviously, if you're not in the heat of testing season or something else more important going on, but it was just kind of random. And we did some, like they really wanted to do Google Maps and like find their house, find some cool stuff. Some of them went to Disney World, some wanted to go to New York City and all that. It was just a lot of fun. We went off script. And like for me, I'm the type of person that likes to stick to a routine, and I like to be very planned out meticulously, like to the minute. Um, but I, I'm, like over time, I realize that sometimes it is okay to just kind of completely take off script and have your students take you, have your students guide the class, um, either academically or just for fun sometimes. Um, that's, you know, part one of the great things about teaching in small group mostly is your students really direct you to where they're going next. You've, you know, and, and it kind of, it makes planning a lot easier because you just kind of have to see where they go. When I plan, I can really only plan for the first lesson of the week for my small groups and then I make an adaptations based on how they perform in the lesson and it really, um, it's really in the moment planning every day and I really enjoy doing it that way. It's less to do in one time, but you're planning every day as opposed to planning for weeks and weeks ahead. But even though it's the end of the year, I'm still doing the small group because it's routine, that's what they're used to and um, it's, it's really getting into a groove and it's like bittersweet because I know the school year is almost over. We only have 14 more days of kids and um, we're like in a really good groove right now, but it's going to be coming to an end. So trying to make the best of the time I have left with them, try to like, especially in kindergarten, you would not believe how much they learn from like March to May. Like that window right there is huge because like they're ready now. They're ready to roll. They're ready to rock. They are, it, it's something weird happens in kindergarten in the spring. Um, behaviorally, they get weird, but academically, like it's, they're so more, they soak more up. I don't understand it. My fifth year in kindergarten and I still don't understand it, but I try not to take this time for granted. Okay, so um, something else I wanted to talk about was I, I started doing YouTube to help teachers, to help other teachers, and I didn't, I never realized that, it never occurred to me that I would also be receiving feedback and help, and um, doing, the, like, spending this entire school year doing YouTube has really, really, really helped my career. Um, I feel like I've got, I became a stronger teacher um, because I've been reflecting on my practice every single day, every single week, and a couple weeks ago, I got some really great feedback from a few people about my um, classroom strategy where I have a character named Dopey and he it, he was this character that we made up as a class who never did anything right and he was like he broke the rules and we would talk about how to not be like Dopey and I got some great feedback on on that on that strategy um, I some um, the feedback was given it was twofold the first part of it was the, maybe the best way to teach social skills isn't to talk about what you shouldn't be doing, but what you should be doing. Some other feedback that I got was the dopey character that I drew himself, um, someone had pointed out that this, per, that this character um, looked a lot like someone who might have an intellectual disability or something like that, and they thought maybe, it, they were a bit concerned that, um, that students were you know, making fun of this person who looked like they might have had a disability or uh, um, something along those lines and is that the best way to teach social skills? So I really took that to heart and I reflected on that. 
So what I have done is we are now focusing, when it, this was just a funny, silly thing that we would do from time to time. And I've sort of switched my thinking on that. And instead of focusing on what we shouldn't be doing, it's almost always positive. And I've done that with Classroom Dojo as well. It's positive, 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 pointing out the positive. And now the character Dopey exists but the character Dopey is actually an evil alien from outer space um, who sole purpose, his sole purpose is he is trying to come to schools and trying to mess everybody up. So here's what, here's what we did this week. Okay. To defeat the evil alien Dopey, we must join together as one and follow the rules. Here's Dopey, the evil alien, and his bird, pet bird, derpy. We got dopey and derpy. And he's got a little growth on his head who tries to tell him to do the right thing. Do the right thing. We didn't come up with a name. We did not come up with a name for him yet. Um, but there's the dope mobile. That's where he zips around the, he, the galaxy in trying to destroy schools. He talks when the teacher talks and he hits and eats boogers and farts all the time. So he tries to, and he tries to destroy our classroom community with his orb of influence. Tries to make us do the wrong thing, that's his secret weapon. So basically, to make sure that Dopey does not get into our classroom, to make sure that he does not destroy our, and conquer our school, we are always focusing on doing the right thing. We're always modeling the correct behavior, we're always doing our best, being our best, trying our best, we constantly recite the school expectations of being respectful, responsible, and safe, and my strategy revolves around doing the right thing. We don't even really talk about doing the wrong thing because someone else pointed out, some more feedback that I got was, let me just put it down, was if you're talking about certain students, if you say what we shouldn't be doing and we model what we shouldn't be doing, certain students might attach that behavior to what they should be doing because they may have misunderstood. Developmentally, they may attach the wrong behavior um, to what they should be doing if we're focusing on the negative. So we only talk about positive. This is what we should do. This is what we should see, what we should do, what we should hear. And I don't want to get any mixed messages with my students on the right way and the wrong way. And so Dopey is this character that we're trying to defeat. We're joining together as one classroom community, as a fictional character from outer space and he's goofy and silly, and they they absolutely ate it up the other day. It was playtime at the end of the day. I started drawing on the whiteboard, and they we just, it was so much fun. And I've been using the positive reinforcements, um, and we've been talking about getting ready for first grade and what first grader would look like. And a few days this week, we had some preschoolers come in to see what kindergarten kindergartners like, and they loved showing the preschoolers how we do it in kindergarten. Uh, it's just been a very good week, a very positive week. Uh, I, I received some feedback on Classroom Dojo last week about this um, one teacher only does positive, and so I decided to do that this week. Classroom Dojo has only been positive this week. No negatives whatsoever, and I tried to be very specific. So here's what I would do. Before we would do a hallway transition, I would say, we are about to go out in the hallway. And I would say, right now, every one of you has a point. In the system, I've got you, I've got you selected, everybody has a point. To, and then I would say, to keep your point and make sure that you get that point, here's what I'm, we're looking for. Hands on hips, bubbles on lips, and eyes forward. If I don't have to remind you of any of the rules, you keep that point. And so it's positive, constant positive. I wanted them to know what constitutes a point because I don't want it to always just be random. Sometimes it can be, but I don't want it to be a thing to correct behavior. I want it to be a thing to promote positive behavior. Like you can't narrate your way or dojo your way out of classroom chaos. If everybody's talking and it's getting chaotic, you can't just say, oh, dojo point for you and you. It doesn't work to get the class back together from what I have found. It's more of a preventative, it's more of a positive, um, preemptive activity. So for example, before you're about to do an activity, you'll let them know what they need to do to earn a dojo point. When we did small groups today at, in the afternoon for math, um, they have choice time for the first 30 minutes where they get to choose what they want to do. And I let them know that any activity that you choose to do, you will get a dojo point for if you meet the following requirements. If you are quiet while you're working, 
and you are nice to one another. And so they knew that's how they got the point. And I said, now there are actually three activities that if you choose to do these, you'll actually earn double points because those are the more rigorous academic activities versus the play-based activities or the, uh, or the review activities. So they knew going into it how to earn points and how many points, you know, what got them a certain amount of points. And I'm still playing around with it as a whole, but I, I'm loving Dojo, and next year I'm gonna use it and have all the parents invited, and I'm gonna take some pictures of student work and share it with parents. That's, some, that's like a push for myself for next school year to get better at sharing things with parents. Um, and that's something that, this is a tool that really, 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 really helped me with that, and I'm loving it. And the last topic that I wanna talk about today is on Thursday, yesterday, I had a bit of an epiphany. So I have to kind of explain myself before I talk about what happened. Because of my background and because of where I, because of where my roots are and where I got started, I have really high expectations. Um, my first years in Chicago teaching, I was part of a I was part of a group of teachers who um, there was a school that they were going to shut down, and we kind of built it back up from scratch. We took it over and we changed it around and we were in this very poor neighborhood on the south side of Chicago and the school it was going to close and we came in we we painted we got a new logo got a new mascot we talked about the we we, established, we created a new school from nothing and within 2 years we were able to we were able to make it a respectable neighborhood school we raised the test scores we got student uh, we got student attendance up we got parent involvement up and it was a wonderful experience. So I'm coming from a place where I know what it takes to, to, to get change in an inner city school, and I, I know what it takes. So I have very high expectations for my kindergarten kids, no matter where I'm at. And so I'm coming, to the, I'm coming into this new school here with these expectations. So my expectations might be higher than a typical kindergarten classroom, just because this is all I this is all I've known is super high expectations. I've never known anything else, so that's the way that I teach. So now that I kind of laid that foundation, on Wednesday, on Thursday, I was teaching a whole group lesson, which if you know me, you know that's not my forte. And normally I would wait until I got 100% quiet before I would speak. And if you know anything about kindergarten, that's not that easy to do. Um, but on Thursday, what I had started doing was I just kept I was just, I kept on teaching. I kept positive. I kept my energy up. I was narrating. I was giving kids dojo points. I was being positive. And yeah, there was a couple kids talking from time to time, but I didn't stop my instruction to correct them. I just kept going. And, and if they weren't on board, they would jump on board and I would lose some here and I'd lose some there. But for the most of the part, like you're, I, you gotta realize you're never gonna have 100%. And that's my, something I gotta constantly tell myself is you're never gonna have 100% no matter what you do in life. So don't expect 100% when 90% might be fine, 95% compliance or not just compliance but like actively engaged because even as adults even as adults if we're sitting in a lecture or a meeting we're not fully engaged the entire time so that being said i just kept going kept teaching and for the 95 percent of students that were doing it it was awesome it was fun it was energetic and i really enjoyed my time teaching that whole group instruction so i'm going to take that and to next year with that in mind and try to remember that so i'm going to watch this video before the first day of school next year and remember what I felt when I was teaching on Thursday. That positivity, that high energy, the not expecting 100% and not getting upset when I didn't get 100%. Like when students don't meet my expectations, I don't need to be upset about it. I can stay positive and continue to teach and try to inspire them to meet the expectations and they'll want, you know, when they see everybody else doing it right and having fun, they'll want to eventually join up on board. So, I know I rambled a lot this week, but I had a lot to share, a lot to talk about, and that's what I wanna do on Fridays, is share with you just classroom stuff, because the daily vlog isn't always about classroom stuff. So, I wanted to share what was going on with you. So, I'm gonna get out of here, it's Friday, I'm gonna get out of here. So, find your gift, share it with the world, and remember, you are worth it. See you tomorrow.